sounds right in your spirit when you hear it. It says, in the beginning, God. I said, I'm good with that. I don't, I don't think about nothing else. I don't think about, was well, there a God mother? Right. Did, did you get that joke? You guys are dead. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good with that. I, I, have, I have enough faith. To, I, can, I have more faith in that than some of this stupidness that comes down the pipe. Yeah. And uh, right. it's just simple to me. It's, that makes sense. And it, and it witnesses. I said, there's, there's no way all this is just by chance. What? And then, uh, and then, like I said, as they keep on proving throughout the Bible that there was situations that actually did happen, I said, all right, I, I'm in. I'm all in. So I love, I love the Lord. I love these scriptures. Anyway, what stuck out to me the most yesterday um, is when Jesus said, in was it 18, I'm looking at 17, I'm getting ready. <laughs> Oh, okay, so it did start at 17. I was right. But in that, I mean, he's, my goodness, like I said, the scriptures is, and, they, and we're supposed to be the same way. The scriptures are so burned in him, and Gabe's on his way, too. He's got a nice report in there. And, uh, and Jose, because he, he had to sit down and read. He got put on timeout, so he had to read. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Deacon John, Deacon John as well. But you're supposed to know these scriptures just as much as you know these, these stupid worldly songs or Christmas right. songs or anything like that. Right. And, uh, and right. Dad, my goodness, I mean, his recall on these scriptures, and he, it's, it's amazing. Yes. Yep. He'll say something, he can pull it right out, and then he'll tell you. Right. It's, yep. that's, right. that's, that's awesome. Yep. Right. From a person that couldn't read. You guys, right. not, you guys I don't know who right. right. didn't hear right. that before. But he couldn't read before. Right. And he was an athlete, so they make they make things happen for you to still play for the team. Right. And uh, and then he and then he I mean that's all the way to college. Right. Into college. So that means he went through grade school, right. junior high, high school. Right. And, and the only reason I'm bringing it up is because I'm going through it in my own personal life. Not with me, my my, my kids. Right. Right. And uh, and I don't, I don't look at that. They tell me, oh, there's a problem. Uh, uh. Right. I said, no. Right. Right. I've seen it work. Right. I've seen it's everything's going to be okay. Right. Like I said, we know what the end result right. is, so I can rejoice. I don't have to worry about all the, all the side stuff. I know what God has planned for my Christmas, so I go, forget all that. I don't, I don't know where it's, how it's going to follow the watch. It's going, this is going to be cool. So... I know it can happen. Anyway, the recall on the scriptures for Bishop is amazing from a person that uh, couldn't read. And, and one time I had made the mistake of my, my mother and father sacrificed so much. They kept me in uh, private schools my whole life all the way up to, uh, to my junior year. And uh, they made that investment and, uh, and sacrifice uh, so, they wouldn't, so I wouldn't have to go through what they went through. And I do the same thing for my family. But uh, there was a point where he had asked me, a, it was a simple word, and I giggled. I was in fifth grade or something, fourth grade. And, uh, <laughs> and he said, Clifton, I, I, I don't know what that word is, and that's why I have you in school. Right. So you don't have to suffer like I did. And, right. and I made the adjustment, you know, at a young age to, uh, to help. And I always, I'm, and anybody that deals with me, you know. And you're supposed to be the same way. You help. If somebody calls out, you help. Don't don't you dare try to say you have something else uh, to do. If it's a valid, if it's somebody that needs help or has a weakness, and you can step in, you can be strong because we're supposed to help out. You get in there and you help. Amen. So ever since then, I had I had repented and I made sure I, I always help uh, with spelling or, or any vocabulary or anything like that. Um, Anyway, like I said, if you guys have a struggle, God will see you through. Yes. You know, yes. the power right there. <laughs> Revelations 1, 17. The part that stuck out to me the most. And uh, it was a revelation to John. To John. Uh, he was one of the apostles. And they had did... A whole bunch of stuff to try to stop 
to kill the seed that Jesus had planted in him yeah. in, in the disciples that became apostles and spread the word. And they, they smashed. Those 12 men flipped the world upside down Amen. so much Amen. that 2,000 years later, we're still talking about what, what happened during their time. What are they going to talk about when you get old? Are we just going to be off, you know, there was a church. Or I was going to say there was a church that made the difference. And there was healings and there were miracles and signs and wonders. But that, stopped, that didn't start with, that's not with the apostle that's over this a lot, but that's with us. It's with us, us sacrificing and praying and believing God for these things that happen. Yeah. Revelation 1.17. Uh, so John says, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as a dead man. And he laid his right hand upon me saying, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. And the living one. I was dead and behold, I'm alive forevermore. I have the keys of death and Hades. I was, I was, that was so, dad started going off. And he was, he was screaming. And he was trying to get reaction out of us. And, and in this, on the inside, I was the same way, but I didn't physically, I'm not, I don't know. It's weird. But in the inside, I felt the same way. I said, see, and my brand, I was like, see, I told you we win. He's the first in the, in the last. The Alpha and Omega. Get in line and follow and follow and, and believe and watch. Yes. 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 God. Yeah. Anyway, that's the part that stuck out most to me. Don't ever let anybody try to question you on your faith. Yes. That's, right. that's right. You stand up. You just like the, all these other cults and stuff, they go crazy. They kill themselves. Imagine if we was that radical. We supposed to be that radical, but we're not supposed to kill ourselves. Well, we are. Supposed to kill our flesh and our all, all our wants and our desires, Amen. and sacrifice and do what we're supposed to do for the kingdom. Yes. God, that's, that's all I got to say. I hope wow. I said something that, that ministered to somebody. Yes. Touched somebody. Yes. You have a great week. I love you. Thank you so much for volunteering. Please welcome Lady Diana. Yes. And she shares what came to her as well. Love you, church. Have a great day. Hi, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We had just a great time. I want you to picture when you go to be with your father or your parents, and you're in the living room, and you're sitting with your dad, and he's talking to you, and he's teaching you. And that's the setting that I wanted to put before you so you understand what we, what we receive from our bishop. We're like in the living room and he's sharing with us and he's teaching us. And I wanted to say that when we left, I said to Justin, you know, all these years and our bishop has such revelation of the Word of God yeah. that we don't even know it yeah, right. how much revelation that he has and it came out again yesterday and you know when he reads the scriptures to me a lot of times life um, situations that I've been through in my life walking with God come to me so one of the things was Abraham you know, God told Abraham to leave his country and to leave his relatives. That was the instructions from the Lord. And he did everything, but he took a relative. And that was a problem. And my question this morning is, how many of you have been persecuted by your own family members right. about your Christianity, right. about what you believe, about where you go? Right. We, you know, if you are, in fact, a Christian, Christ-like, persecution from your own family will come. That's right. So that was what I related to when he talked about Abraham. And, and two, I left my family and my immediate family, my husband at the time, our two sons, we went from Michigan and we came to California. 
And it was like Abraham, the Lord told me he was taking me to a land flowing with milk and honey. Hallelujah. So I could relate when he talks about Abraham because I feel like I went through that with my own family. Then when he read out of Mark 6, 5, Jesus talks about how first you're not a prophet is not welcomed in first his hometown and then second he it's his relatives <laughs> that give him a problem and then third it is your own household you know and i have experienced that because i've always been radical for the lord you know, like my sister was just here and my son said, because she's very radical in her beliefs and very passionate in what she believes, a different denomination, what we were raised in, Catholicism. And Justin said, Mom, she's just like you. <laughs> so when he said that, I thought, wow, that's true. Yeah, I've always been passionate for the Lord. I've always been passionate for what I believe. Amen. And our bishop is like that. And that is what he, he teaches us as leaders. Yeah. So the two things was Abraham. And two, the other thing was the name change. Right. You know, you receive your name change when you receive the character. Right. The character. The character of Jesus. Right. Then your name changes. Right. In school, my name is Diana. But in school, they called me Diane because I didn't like Diana. How many of you really like your names? When you're young, you really don't like your name. You want, you want them to shorten your name or give you a nickname or, you know, you want to pick a name. But they, everybody called me Diane. And when I came into the kingdom of God and I was in the kingdom of God, I said, Diana is so much prettier. The name is so much prettier. But see, because it was my God-given name. You know, so your character will change. When your character change, your name will change. It's just like one day I had revelation about Gabriel. You know, people like Bishop said they want to call him Gabe. But he was up here one Sunday, and when I looked at him, the Lord said, He is Gabriel. He is not Gabe. Because he now has the character of Christ. So now we need to call him Gabriel. We don't need to call him gay because he's not Gabe anymore. He is Gabriel, a man called by God, a prophet of the Lord. Amen. So we want to give that honor where honor is due. Amen. God bless you. Welcome the prophet. Gabriel. Prophet Gabe. Come on, Mom. <laughs> Welcome to prophecy. church. Good morning. What a warm welcome. God bless you. You may be seated. Well, uh, what Bishop talked about, so many things that's so uplifting and so encouraging to me about how the church should be and as Gabriel say, you know, as a family. We look at this church and we always believe that this is a family church. We try to love, we try to help. If, we, if there's needs, we try to meet those needs. But most of all, I believe whenever a family going through problems, did you hear me? Problems in a home, that's the time a family should stick together. Amen? That's not a time for somebody, a member in the family to leave. That's the time the family come together and they show that oneness and they show that love, especially if they say, the Bible says the first commandment now is to love one another. Yes. To love your neighbor as you love yourself. Yes. It's no longer, you know, die should not kill, die should not steal. All those are true that we must be that type of Christian. Right. That we shouldn't want to go out and steal and cover our neighbors. Right. 
and to do wrong or to do harm to one another. But what we have really been dealing with is a lot of um, situation and issues that have happened in the church, but we're still supposed to love. We're supposed to love. We say love covers all things. Love covers a multitude of sin. That was just like Jesus and Bishop, he's constantly doing this. And sometimes him and I disagree on a lot of things because, you know, <laughs> because I used to always say, you know, yeah, I wear a little black robe. They shouldn't be doing that. But he go, God, show mercy on me. So that's what I'm supposed to show mercy. I go, yeah, but, um, you know, we're supposed to be teaching righteousness. So they always that what we think is right and what God, how God see us and how he want to forgive us. Because um, it was just like Jesus, the lady that was caught in adulteries. Yes. Do you guys know your Bible? Do you know that's true? That we all sin and when we come into the house, we're going to continue fall. But we still need that love. We still need the compassion for someone to pick us up and show us the way out. Not to bury you in the problem. It's to help you and take you by the hand and lead you out. So what I always think about and what he always preach about the prodigal son. Did you hear me? Yes. We have to be like the prodigal father. Yes. That's how Jesus see each and every one of us. As we go through things in our life and in the church and in our church family, we should, and he mentioned this that I said on, on Thursday, he said, Pastor Cookie said, why don't you go in, why don't you go and pray for them? Or why don't you go pray for the people that, that left the church? And, um, it was a conversation between the two of us. But my thing was, you know, instead of talking about the situation and keep spreading the gospel and spreading rumors, let us pray. Yes. You know, Paul and Silas, they was in the, in the prison. Right. Right. So sometimes we find ourselves in dark and sad places. That was a sad place. Right. So when one of our brothers or sisters fall or they leave the church, that is painful. That's very painful for Bishop and I. We're not happy. It's about like one of our loved ones, one of our birth kids. If they leave home, you think we rejoice it? And we know they're not happy? You think the prodigal son was happy and rejoicing because his son wanted everything that he worked so hard to give him to make sure that he have a happy and a prosperous life? So when people leave the church, we have invested a lot of time in loving them. So it's sad in our heart to see them leave. So we're not trying to push people and force people to leave the church. Our heart cry out and weep for those people. So that's what I was pretty much telling him. You know, God said we still have to continue to pray. Pray for them. Because God said you have to pray for your enemy and for people who do wrong to you, but yet still you go, no, they did me wrong. I'm not going to pray for them. We still have to pray for them. Because, you know, when you talk about forgiveness, that's one of the biggest sins that we can have in our life when we don't know how to forgive. Did you hear me? That's what the church have a problem with on forgiveness. But he said you must forgive if you don't forgive your heavenly father won't forgive you. I was speaking to my youngest sister last week, Sunday after church, and she was saying about the preacher, the preacher preached on forgiveness. And she was like, oh yeah, that was so good. You have to forgive this many times. And she said, you have to keep forgiving the same people over and over again that hurt you. I said, but Betty, I said, let me tell you this. This is the biggest part about forgiveness. If you don't forgive, they blocking you and stopping you from getting into heaven. Because God said that. He said, if you don't forgive them, your heavenly father not going to forgive you. So if God not going to forgive you, how are you going to get to heaven? I said, I'm not going to let nobody steal my ticket. They're not worth it to me. Did you hear me? Nobody is worth your salvation. So you have to learn, number one, that's the key. You must forgive. Amen. So... That's what separates the Christians from the non-Christians. Right. Did you hear me? Yes. 
You are no different from the non-Christian if you can't forgive. Because forgiveness is love. God said, if you love me, you will serve me. He said, if you love me, you will teach and train my sheep. He said that to Peter. Do you love me? He didn't ask him one time. And he go, yes, Lord. He asked Peter again, do you love me? He go, yes, Lord, of course I love you. He go, Peter, do you really love me? Why would Jesus ask him a third time? Because guess what? God knows our heart. You might say something out of your mouth, but it's the heart that God judges. Did you hear me? So this might have a, uh, uh, not too much to do with what we talked about yesterday, but that's what I got out of yesterday as leaders that we got the love unconditionally. Right, right. We got the love when it hurt. Yeah, yeah. We got the give when it hurt. Yeah, yeah. Give what? You don't have to have money. Right. Give your time, give your love. Right. Pray for one another. Yeah. Paul and Silas, they prayed. And they didn't only pray for themselves, they prayed so loud until the, the chains on the prison door broke. Did you hear me? And the shackles on their hands. That's what prayer is all about. You pray until you get results. You pray until you see change. So that was the prayer. That's what I was talking about to him. We got to pray until we see change. Amen. That's what we got to do in our country. Our country is falling away from God. It's just like it was in the days of judges. How Joshua generation. Joshua will receive the promised land, but after that, they turn away from God. So our country have turned away from God, but we got to pray until we see change. We want change, but we got to pray until we see change. It's time for the Christian to fall on their knees again and get real with God and stop playing church. The church is a new room. You know, we went to see a movie last week, and it was really good. It was War Room. Oh. So, but this little lady, she reminded me of myself, and Ray told me I need to go see that movie. But she, she was, she really had a prayer closet, and I really used, to, I really have a prayer closet. And my mother used to, my mother-in-law used to laugh at me. She said, "Cookie, you really used to go in the closet and pray." Well, guess what? It's true. You got to get up, separate yourself. You got to get alone with God where there's nobody but you and God. Did you hear me? This is the time that we're living in. This is an urgent time. This is a crucial time. You got to lock yourself in your closet and you got to get alone and you got to be in business with you and God if you want change. Did you hear me? Well, God bless you. I'm not here to preach today. I didn't want to come up. But Bishop said I must come up. So, you know, you have to be obedient. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So, we got different varieties of what the Spirit said right. from yesterday at the meeting. Yes. And as my brother said, you know, it's a privilege to be able to have a man of God and a, a woman of God as your parents. And um, the sacrifice, as my brother had explained, that my mother and father had made for us, you know, it wasn't easy for them. You know, they had to deal with a church filled with people. And at, at that time, we had about 800 to 1,000 people when I was growing up. Right. So there was a lot of people with a lot of mess, right. with a lot of foolishness. <laughs> And, um, you know, I remember two, three, four o'clock in the morning, all hours of the morning, my parents would be dealing with right. other people's mess. Right. And they would be putting their time aside, their sleep time, their rest time, right. and, and the time they spending in the spirit being drained by other people's mess. Right. And, um, you know, I watched that growing up. So now we're at a place to where my parents, what we're the, trying to do and what they've been doing is, is raising up leaders yeah. so that because it's just like what my father read in Joshua, 
about Moses and all the people that they had. There were six million of them. And so if you imagine six million people with all of their stuff. And Moses was trying to do it by himself. That's why he had a father-in-law who saw and said, this is too much. This will kill you. So you have to set up leadership. You have to set up a council to where the people can come and the leaders and the council can deal with the issues. The small issues you deal, the leaders deal with. The major, major issues, then they bring them to you. So the, the understanding of that is the structure of the church is, is there's leadership. And who the leader of the house, who the apostle of the house and the prophet of the, of the house, who they've set in leadership, you, you, what you have to understand is what people have to understand in the churches is there's a chain of command. And what people like to do is, is they want to bypass the leadership that the, the, the man and the woman of God have instilled in the house. They want to bypass that and go, I want to talk to Bishop, or should I go straight to Bishop? What you don't understand is the Bishop is fighting for his life every day. So he does not have time to deal with small matters. He doesn't have time to deal with gossiping foolishness. He doesn't, neither does my mother. They don't have time for that. They've been in this over 30 years. They have raised up leaders, but what happens is, is People don't like the leaders that they raise up, or they don't agree with the leaders. That you have no, you have no say in that. So what happens is, is when you're a leader and you meet with, we meet with council. Yeah. So at the leadership meeting, the leaders get addressed. The issues that the leaders have, the, the adjustments that the leaders need to make, is all taking place in the leadership meeting. We go there to learn how to be a leader. And the first thing of being able to be a leader is being able to repent. Repent. That's the first step to being a good leader is when you do wrong, you repent. Then the second thing is, is you forgive. You forgive. You repent, you forgive. Now we're going to get into some scripture, scripture talking about that. But, you know, the things that I just wanted to lay that, you know, there was a lot of things that were said. Um, my brother kept saying, the, uh, uh, you're not here by chance. You're not here by, by, by chance. If you are here, that means the Spirit of God brought you here. Yes. And see, what happens is, is we second guess the Spirit of God. We second guess what God has already showed us and told us. Brother, some new mic, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. You know, because we've been having an issue with the hand here when they get up and speak. What that is, is that's the demons don't want the message to come out clear. And what you got to understand is, is you don't believe, but the demons will go in your cell phone waves. They will shut your phone off. It happens all the time. I'll be ministering to someone, giving them something that helped them for their life, and the phone will shut off. And then what happens is you call back and they'll keep shutting off because they don't want the message. Or if you want to go watch Ustream and you can't get through, it's stuttering, it's bubbling, it won't let you through. It won't. Those are the demons trying to get you to be frustrated. So you just say, you know what, I'll just watch it another time. Then they go, good. We can keep you in what we got for you and not hear that message that will bust us up. You gotta, you gotta be aware of these things right. and, and grow our understanding. Yeah. So a few things that stood out to me, which I actually did my study on things that came out from my father yesterday, which um, one of the things, well, was the, when, first of all, when, to clear up, not clear, but to add on to what Diana said, because a lot of things my brother said and she said were things that I also got. But one of the things is when he told Abel, see, what happens is the spirit began moving on Thursday. Well, he's moving every day. Right. But most of the time, we're not in tune. We're not understanding. We're not paying attention. Just like last week on Sunday. See, what happens is when the spirit says something, he just keeps going and continuing. Right. And if you stay in that vein, like my dad said yesterday, one of the things he said is, is as far as a minister, I'm not going to try to get up here and preach my own thing. Why do I need to do that when I have a lifetime of material of things that my father's already many, many, many uncountable lines of the spirit that he's already shot out in the atmosphere? 
I have many different things that I can just go and say, oh, well, I could just pick this one, this one, that one, and my father's already blazed the trail, and I'll just see if I can add on to that. Or see if the Spirit has any more with that. So, yesterday, when he said about, um, he said, uh, he was saying about Abraham and how Abraham had left. He left his country. He left his family. Oh, this is what I want to say. Is the Spirit came out on Thursday. The Spirit came out on Thursday about Jesus, how Jesus talked about the prophet in his own hometown. Right. Then he went to the three dimensions. Right. Oh, thank you. The Spirit brought it back. It went back to Sunday. Right. Last Sunday, the Spirit brought out about himself, Jesus, right. about how his family was outside of the temple. Right. His family was outside of the temple, and they sent a message into him while he was ministering, while he was there with his disciples. Well, on Thursday, while we're sitting there and we're ministering, my father is praying, we're standing in agreement with Miss Nash, there's someone that comes in and taps me with a message from someone outside of the church. See, what happens is, is what's preached, it, it, it acts. It acts. But people are not in tune, they're not paying attention, they're not even aware. So what, what was being preached, what comes out today, you will see evidence of this today and through the rest of the week. If you are paying attention, if you are not, you will just completely miss it. It has already went over your head. So if we're in tune with the Spirit, this is alive. This is not just words, this is alive. So when the Spirit is enacting these things, it's going to keep going. So we're not we're not we're not getting up here talking about anything different. We're adding on to what the spirit has already brought out. So from Sunday to Thursday, Thursday he brought out the three dimensions of the prophet, which Miss Dye brought out is about no honor in the hometown, no honor with your family, relatives. It says, and what my dad said yesterday is relatives doesn't just mean your family. Relatives means those that are familiar with you. So it doesn't just have to be your blood. It could be those that are familiar with you. No honor with those that know you. Three dimensions. Home, family, uh, relatives, and town. In your house, in your relatives, and in the city that you live in. The man of God will not be honored. So then we went into yesterday. This all came from Sunday to Thursday to yesterday to today. So the Spirit just continues to shoot out things. Continues to pour out revelation. If you stay on the train, that's what he said yesterday. If you stay on the vein that the Spirit has opened up, he would just keep pouring out more things, more substance, more revelation. So what my father was talking about yesterday, when he was saying about, when he was saying about, Abraham, Abraham left, but like Diana said, he took a relative, so he wanted to hold on to the natural. He still did what God told him to do. He left one thing, so this thing, we think that if we do, say the Lord tells us three things, and you do two out of the three, you didn't complete what he told you to do. So we like to naturally rationalize and say, I did do what God told me. Wait a minute, if you didn't do everything he told you, then you didn't complete what he told you to do. So God told Abram to leave. Leave his country, leave his relatives, leave the familiar ground. Leave that. He did that, but he took a natural soul tie with him because it was his family member. It was, Lot was Abraham's nephew. And because of that, that cost Abraham dearly. He had to then go back. We don't have time to get all into it. But because he did that, he had then had to separate himself because it was all kind of internal mess. Internal friction. Internal division. Between families. So Abraham said, you go your way, I'll go my way. And then he actually let Lot choose. He said, if you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. Anywhere that I go, I know that God will be with me. But I just know that I have to get away from you. So we have to go our separate way. Now when that happened, later on, Abraham had to go save Lot. 
He had to go save Lot because Lot was out of order. Now see, if Lot, here's, an, here's, here's just something. If Lot was a man of order and structure, he would have made his family line up with the man of God. He would have told his wife to be quiet because she all every time Abraham said something, she always questioned it. Every time Abraham said something from God, she questioned it. And he allowed it. So therefore, he allowed division and strife in his entire household. Now, if he was a man of order and structure and recognized his uncle as the man of God, he would have told his wife to shut her mouth. He would have told everyone in his camp, we will go the way that Abraham goes because Abraham hears from God. But that didn't happen. So because because. Lot was not a man of structure, was not a man of order, and he allowed his wife and his family to deter his decisions on who his uncle was. Think about it. His uncle, this his relative, is the man of God. But yet you let these people that have nothing to do with that, you let them sway your decisions, and that's what we do. We let outside influences sway our way of thinking, sway our decisions. What God has clearly said to the man of God, we allow outside influences to go against what the man of God has said. And that alters your life. But we don't think that's true. We don't believe that. So anyways, that's just a clarification. If Lot would have had the structure in order, he would have made everyone in his camp line up with the man of God. And then guess what? Their whole camp would have been able to stay together. They would have been blessed. They would have been where Abram, Abram went. Abraham wouldn't have to go and save his stupid nephew because he was a wild-ish. Okay, that's just that. That had nothing to do with it. That just came out from the Anyway, so my father was talking about that, which my father has demonstrated and just goes into when we didn't have a, a set house. We didn't have a house. And my father was going to these different places. All he was doing was doing what Abraham said. And I would constantly remind my dad to say, Dad, you Abraham. Wherever we got to go, I'm with you. We got to go. We got to move once a week. We got to move every two weeks. I'm moving it. The, we can't explain to natural minded people why don't you just go get a house why don't you just go rent a house because you don't understand who he is if you knew by revelation who the apostle was you wouldn't say stupid things out of your mouth but we are so carnal minded we are so in our ways that society has taught us that we allow the principles of God to be watered down and then disintegrated in our lives because of society, because of TV, because of school, because of the governments, all these kingdoms, all these, that's what it talks about in Revelations. The kingdoms, the seven kingdoms, which will yield to the Christ. Anyways, that's how we're, okay, so... Anyways, so that that all came out from Abraham, and then my dad moved to Revelations one, which I'm not even going to that because that'll turn into a whole new sermon. But one way when he said, "Do not be afraid," right. he said, "Do not be afraid." Right. Then he yeah. said, "No." When when he came in the presence of God, he fell on his face right. as a dead man. Right. That's where all those. Let me get some. Let me clear something up about these people that. Revivals. We're having a revival meeting. A revival meeting. A revival meeting from the 12th through the 16th. From the 21st to the 29th. We're going to be having a revival meeting. Listen, if a real revival came through, 90% of the church would lay down. Because it's so much flesh in the church. A revival is actually the wind of God coming through and changing everything that comes in his path. Yeah. Everything that it moves in his way will be changed or destroyed. Right. So we need to stop. So that you got to understand, you need to understand that when you hear about revival meetings. No, if a real revival is, you would know. Right. Because you would hear about all kind of people in church dying. Right. Because when God, that's what it said in Revelations. When God came there, he fell down as a dead man. Right. Your flesh cannot handle the almighty. Right. A revival is the almighty, the wind of him coming through right. and sweeping through. Right. And everything that is not of him gets cleared out. Yes, yes. Anyways. Hallelujah. 
So, um, do not be afraid. Then it goes into Joshua. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Joshua 1, verse 10. I think it starts at 7. Verse 7. He said, be only strong and only courageous. Have no fear. My servant Moses has died, but it has passed on to you. Have no fear. Stay to the words of Moses. The law that I gave Moses. Do not deter from that. So from the Old Testament to the New, what is the Lord saying? Do not be afraid. Amen. Do not have fear because Christians are being persecuted. Right. Do not have fear. Right. That was so good what my brother said about the Bible. Right. You have people that have no respect for the Bible. Right. Toss their Bible. Right. Read it with nonchalant. Do not even know that you're a fool and the words that you're, you're acting that about could cost you your life. Right. Because they are holy words. Right. Not understanding this is not a book from your school. Right. This is not a textbook. Right. This is the only book. Right. This is the book of life and it is alive. Yes. But if you don't believe that, then that's why you're not getting what you need. Right. Okay. All right, we're going to go to some scripture quickly. Amen. They have to back up with what I got yesterday from when my father was pouring out the keys of the kingdom because only an apostle can do that. Nobody else can give out the keys of the kingdom but an apostle. That's what Jesus said. So let's turn to Matthew and then my dad went into Mark also. This, it was so much that happened I don't have enough time to go into everything. So I got to move quickly on what, what I got. No, actually... Yeah, we're going to go to John. Yep. First, we're going to start in John 3. Okay, so not only that, is this, the other thing that my father said is, is it's just a, what, had, what God told Abram is the same as what Jesus told the disciples. He told them, leave all their belongings, right. leave their mother and father, right. leave all those natural things, and follow me. Right. That's so it's the same. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. What well, God told Abram, right. he told him to leave your familiar rarities. Yeah. Leave that. Leave your relatives. Leave everything that you know and go. Yeah. Well, Jesus told the disciples the same thing. So, when people try to say, oh, that's Old Testament. The Old Testament and the New Testament are chained together. They're chained together. It's not, oh, we're new. You hear this a lot. We're New, we're new Testament Christians. Oh, so that means that everything that happened before Jesus, all the prophecies about Jesus, all that is just null and void, right? It means nothing. So all the men of God that sacrificed their lives, that gave their lives, all the women of God that gave their lives, that's just erased because I'm a New Testament Christian. You don't even know what a Christian is. If it was just New Testament, Jesus would have said, forget about the prophets in the old. Forget everything they said about me. It does not matter. I am here. No, he didn't do that. He said, remember what the prophets said. He said, remember what they said. Remember what they told you. Do not forget what your forefathers gave prior to me coming. Because you don't even know it's me anyways. Okay, so as God told Abram to leave his, his everything that he was familiar with and leave his belongings and come with him, that's the same thing Jesus told the disciples. Okay. So in John 3, so what I wanted to show is, 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 is Jesus, okay, we're going to start, this is when Jesus talk. I can't go into everything. But when Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, this Nicodemus was trying to figure out naturally, he was a Pharisee, 
He was a man of God, but he was trying to figure out naturally the things spiritually Jesus was telling him. So he was trying to break it down about being, my dad said this on Thursday too, about being born again and him asking, can you go, how do you do that, going to your mother's womb, all of that. So then Jesus said, so we're going to start in 10, chapter 3, verse 10. It says, Jesus answered, said to him, are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Meaning, you're a man of God, but you understand not what I tell you? Are you not a man of the word? Wow. So wait a minute. You're teaching all of Israel, but you have no idea what I'm talking about. Wow. Something is very wrong with that. Right. So you are the one elected to teach my people, right. yet you cannot understand what I'm telling you. Wow. Well, and what I'm telling you is the spirit of God. Right. Hmm. So that lets you know about religion. Right. The spirit of religion is opposite of the spirit of God. So even though this man had done, we don't know how many hours and days of studying and dedication to God, he knew nothing of the Spirit. Right. Nothing. Right. Right. Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen. Yes. And you do not receive our witness. Jesus and the Holy Spirit are one. Right. That's why he said our. We testify to what we have seen. Right. The miracles that we have seen the Lord do. Right. Well, what happens is, is we forget the miracles right. that Jesus has done right. for us. We forget the right. things that God has done for right. us. Right. We forget them because of the darkness that we're constantly steeping ourselves right. in. Right. Because of the conversations that we have. Right. Our conversations are so worldly. Right. And so out of court that you can't have any recollection of what God has done because your mind, your soul, and your spirit is filled with out of court. Yeah. This is what Jesus is saying. If I have told you, verse 12, if I have told you, he said, you do not receive our. So guess what? If you don't have the Holy Spirit, how do you have Jesus? All right. All right. Most assuredly, I said, no, if I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Let's read that one again. If I have told you earthly things, meaning the simple things that I broke down to you, and you do not understand that, what makes you think I'm going to continue in talking to you about earthly, I mean heavenly things? You didn't get the earthly things. If I told you earthly things and you do not believe, didn't believe. Man of God he's talking to. Religious man of God. How will you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? That's what the people that always wanted to ask my dad. Well, what happened in heaven? What happened in heaven? What, what did you do in heaven? And see, he, he can't even, well, what's the point? What's the point? When he tells you, go do this with your job, or you need to make that adjustment, and you don't listen to that, why is he going to talk about what happened in heaven? Then we're going to get to that next. Look, look at this, look at this. Verse 13. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven... That is the Son of Man who is in heaven. Right. Come on. Right, we don't we didn't we didn't get that right. Okay. Let's break that down. Okay. He's saying, besides me, no one has ascended and descended from heaven. But he who came down from heaven, me, Jesus, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. My father and I are not separated. Right. So I have come from heaven, ascended and descended. Me and my father are not separated. No one else has done this. Let's fast forward. Our bishop went to heaven and came back. Wait, it says right here. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven. So prior... No one had done that for Jesus. Amen. Right. But since then, because Jesus unleashed the keys into his apostles, that yeah. they can do the same things as he has done, now we have, in our modern time, apostles who have 
ascended to heaven and descended back down to earth. But yet, we are so much in our flesh, I want to go talk to the bishop. For what? No, seriously, why? You're not receiving what he's saying anyways. When he sets an authority, when he sends a message, whoever the messenger that he chooses, and you do not receive that message, you do not receive him. Okay, you don't believe that, right? Okay, hold on, let's, 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 go, let's go to chapter five. Let's go to chapter five. And let's start, <laughs> let's start at verse 31. Still, this is Jesus speaking. Right. Now we just got that principle, right? Yeah. You don't receive the message from the message of God, from the, from the messenger of God. Right. Apostle means one that is sent by God with a right. message. Right. So when he sends a message and you don't receive that, hey, don't worry about what's going on over there. Yeah. Right. Stay focused on what the Spirit is right. saying to your life. When the messenger, the apostle, who is sent by God with a message, yeah. when he delegates a message to come to you and you do not receive it because of the messenger, you have not received the man of God nor God's message. Right. Right. Now, Jesus is going to clarify that about himself. Verse 31, it says, If I bear witness, Jesus says, If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Yeah. Mm. Let's read that again. Yeah. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Meaning, I'm not going to justify myself. Right. Another witness will justify, but we're going to get into that. Okay. There is another. Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. There is another who bears witness of me. And I know that the witness which he witnessed of me is true. Yeah. Okay, so if I say it myself, number one, you're not going to believe it anyway. If, I was, if, if you believe that I was the Christ, then guess what? You wouldn't need a witness. <laughs> if you knew that it was me, the Christ, standing before you, I wouldn't need to send you to someone else to witness that it's me. But because you are blind, deaf, and dumb, I will show you someone else who witnesses that it's me, the Christ. Therefore, there's another who bears witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true, right. because him and me are one. Right. Right. You have sent to John, and he has borne witness to the truth. Right. Yet I do not receive testimony from man, but I say these things that you may be saved. Amen. Meaning, yes. Everything I'm telling you is to save your life. Amen. If you had the Holy Spirit inside of you that was built up, he would give witness when I speak to save your life. Then we're not, we didn't get to, we didn't understand. We got one person that clapped, okay? Let's break that down some more. Jesus is speaking. And the Holy Spirit inside of you should know that it's Jesus when he speaks. So the Holy Spirit inside of you should know if it's Jesus or not. When it's Jesus speaking, the Spirit inside of you will give you a witness. If you don't get a witness, that means your spirit is sleeping. Okay. He said, Jesus said, I don't receive testimony from man. But wait a minute. Jesus was a man. Right. right. He was God in man. He was God manifested in the flesh. Right. Right. To demonstrate, to testify who he is and fulfill all of the words before his time. Wow. No response. We we we've definitely got to, we've got to boost our we we've got to boost our prayer life. Yeah. We've got to boost our receptivity. Yeah. We've got to boost. We've got to crush our common our carnal mind because Jesus is speaking and nobody's responding. Right. Right. So that means even while He's explaining and breaking it down, we're still not getting it. Because if you can't respond, 
you can't bear witness. If your mouth can't move, that means you're getting nothing. No, no, that's not true. I hear everything that's being said. No, you don't. If you heard, listen, hearers and doers. Hearers and doers. It doesn't say hearers and silent. It doesn't say that anywhere in the scripture. Right. All right. Let's just keep. Let's just keep going. It says thirty-five. He was. He was the burning and shining lamp. And you were willing for a time to rejoice in His light. Amen. What is? Wait, wait. We're shouting out, but do we know what that means? He said, for a moment, you were excited. But as of now, you are dead. Dull of hearing. So go back to your first fruits, which my father said that yesterday. Which Jesus, which the apostles said in Revelations. He said, all these great works you have done, but this I have against you. Return to your first works. Return to your first works. And you will see the fruit of my labor. You will receive the harvest. Yes. Return to your first works. If you have lack in your life, return to the first works. Yes. If you want God to manifest, return to your first works. Yes. He said, for a time, I was the burning lamp in your life. For a time, you rejoiced about the light of me inside you. What happened to that time? But I have a greater witness than John. Oh. So even though my apostle witnesses, I have a greater one than he. For the works which the Father has given me to finish, the very works that I do bear witness of me, Holy Spirit, that the Father has sent me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. The Father sent Jesus yeah. to finish works. Yeah. To fulfill something. Come on. Yeah. What is that? To build his church yeah. on the rock right. so that the gates of hell cannot prevail. Yeah. But in order for these all these things in sequence to take place, we have to understand what it is. Jesus is telling us. He's saying, I'm speaking, yet you don't hear me. I'm speaking, but your spirit is not awake, so you don't know that it's me. I'm speaking so that I may save your life, but your ears are filled with concrete because of the things you listen to that have nothing to do with me because your mind is set on earthly things so you cannot hear what it is I'm saying to save your life but then we cry out Lord why is this happening to me why am I suffering why can't I pay this bill why can't I pay that bill why is this happening to my kids why is this happening to us not hearing what it is he's telling you to save your life. Then you want to tell the man of God, I know what I'm doing, trust me. What? What? Really? No, seriously, you have that. I, I, I know what I'm doing, just, just, just trust me, just trust me. Just trust your flesh when I'm giving you the word of God for your life? Trust your flesh? I can't do that. I don't trust my flesh. Why would I trust yours? I only trust in the word given from the man of God. And when God speaks directly to me, I go and check. Dad, this is God. Dad, I believe this is God. If it's not, he would tell me. No, that's not. Or you need to adjust this. Or he's saying this about that. Yes, I don't run off and say, the Lord has showed me, and I'm telling you. That's not how it works. I have come because my Father sent me. I'm up here because my Father told me. I am not separate from my Father. So if you do not receive me, you do not receive him. That's for those that want to bypass me and run the bishop. Listen, if you don't.
don't receive what I'm telling you, you're just playing games. Because what he tells you, you're going to say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And do what you want to do anyway. So stop playing. Okay. So we're off to uh, me. He says, and the Father himself who sent me has testified of me. Oh, wow. You have neither heard his voice at any time. So meaning, nor seen his form. You have not heard him at all. Meaning if you have not listened to me, the son, you have heard nothing from the father. Nor have you seen anything from the father. For those that say, God showed me. God showed me. How do you know? How do you know it's not the God of this world? Oh, that's the other thing. That's the other thing that came out. Beelzebub. My father talked about Beelzebub. The father of lies. The lord of the flies. We're going to get to that in the scriptures too though. That's the other thing that, 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 that stuck out to me. When he had said the lord of the flies and then I said Beelzebub. We said the same person. It's the great red dragon. They're all the same. Right. Satan, if you don't know. Right. But you do not have, oh wow. But you do not have his word abiding in you. Because whom he sent, him you do not believe. So if you do not have the word of God in you, you cannot hear Jesus, nor you don't even need to talk about the Father. There's no even point of mentioning him. He says right here. You do not have his word. Who? My right. father's word. The right. Bible. Right. Right. Oh, and to clarify something, to go elaborate on what my brother said about the scientists, there were five of them, historians and scientists, that their heart was set on proving the Bible wrong. Right. And they went to all these places in the Bible, exactly the city, the place, the exact spot. And guess what? There was evidence every single time of what was in the scripture. It was there. That's why after they went to all these different lands, all these different places, they just had to say, I got to become a Christian. Because I haven't found anything in here that's a lie. Amen. Anyways. Oh, here we go. 39. You search the scriptures. That's what those always, I read my Bible, I read my Bible, I read my Bible. You search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. Wow, did he just say you can be deceived? Yeah. Searching the scriptures? Yeah. Jesus didn't say that, right? Yeah. That's what he said. No, no, that's not what it says. No, it says you search the scripture. You. For in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. The scriptures testify of them. Yeah. Right. But you're in deception looking at them. Right. That's why you cannot hear him nor me. Wow. Wow. But you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. Yeah. I do not receive honor from men. But I know you that you do not have the love of God in you. I have come in my father's name and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, you will receive him. Wow. 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 Uh, yeah. <laughs> if I have come in my father's name and you do not receive me, the Christ, you do not receive me from which my I, the mouth of the men of God speak. Right. You do not receive me from their mouths, right. but yet you will receive someone else who comes with their natural carnal explanation of what you should do in your life. Right. Oh, got it. Counseling, <laughs> shrinks, psychiatrists. Right. Right. You do not receive me, but you will go pay money to hear what a carnal man has to say what is wrong with your soul, right. your spirit, and your mind. You will give money gladly right. to find out what's wrong with me. Right. He comes in his own name and you receive him. 
But my men that I have anointed and appointed to give you words of life you do not receive. How can you believe who receive honor from one another and do not seek the honor that comes from only God? Do not think that I shall accuse you to the Father. There is one who accuses you. Moses in whom you trust. We're not going to get into that. That's uh -huh. too much. I'm going to end wow. with John 8. This is what we're going to get. This is the last thing that when my father broke down Beelzebub. Here we go. We're gonna start. There's a whole. This see. This is this is a lifetime of message. Yes. This is a lifetime message. You can read this for the rest of your life and still get every, different things every single day. Yes. It says 14. Jesus, I can't. I don't have time to go into all the above. Jesus answered, said to them, Even if I bear witness of myself, my witness is true. <laughs> that just goes what I said earlier. Right. If you knew who I was. You wouldn't need to bear witness. He just said, even if I bear witness of myself, he said, I'm not going to do that. First, what we read over in chapter 5. He said, I'm not going to do that. But right here he says, even if I do, my witness is true. For I know where I came from and where I am going. Those are the Jesus. Listen, God is the God of past, present, future. Past, is memories. Yes. Future is opportunities. Yes. Let's say that again. Right. Past is memories. Right. The future is opportunities for God to do new things. Right. Yes. But you gotta believe that today. Yes. You gotta see that today. Yes. You have to see that I can't do anything about yesterday right. other than do not do the mistakes I did yesterday right. today. Yes. And tomorrow, make sure that I do what I'm supposed to right. do and what he has for me. Yes. Make sure I keep myself open yes. so that tomorrow he has something new I'm able to receive it. Yes. But if I'm thinking about yesterday yes. going into tomorrow, then guess what? It's a hamster on the wheel. Right. Yes. You can't receive nothing new tomorrow if you're stuck in yesterday. Yes. I know where I came from, the word of God, the breath of God, that's where I came from. I came from the breath of God Almighty. I know where I'm going, but you do not know where I come from or where I'm going. You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. And yet, if I do, let's clarify that, because people think that when the man of God says, oh, you're judging me, you're judging me. No, I'm calling the principle. My father is calling the principle. If we see it, we say it. Right. If you get condemnation, that means you need to break that off of yourself, yeah. repent, right. and move on. Right. Go forward. Yeah. Not come with a religious black rope, you're judging me. The man of God don't have time to judge you. All he has time is to show you what the Spirit is showing right. him, say it, give you the correctiveness, and move on. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right. Yeah. And yet, if I do judge, oh, that's him saying, I judge no one. But if I decide to judge, <laughs> for I am not alone. But I am with the Father who has sent me. Yes. You notice how it, 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 it never separates Jesus from God. Right. The Father and the Son right. never separate. Right. He's constantly talking about, I am sent by my Father, but you don't know. Right. I am sent by my Father, but you can't hear. Right. I am sent by my Father, yes. but you can't see. Right. I am sent by my Father, but you can't understand. Right. Right. I am not alone. Right. 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 You are not alone. If you submit and line yourself up with the things of God, with the order and the covenant and the structure of God, then you are not alone. 
You have the authority to call all things that Jesus gave you the authority to do. So when you go into, I know when I'm all by myself. I have no one to help me. No one likes me. You have people saying this in the church. No one. It's just me. Or, hey, did you ask anyone for help? No, no, I'll take care of myself. Oh, well, that's why you have no help. No, no, all the time. Who have you wanted, who have you wanted to talk to? My father told someone, go over here and ask them. They have no rent. No money for their rent. Go over here to where I told you to go and go and ask them. Well, they went over there and asked and they got $1,700. Right. Wow. Right. Right. If they had that, oh no, no, I'll take care of it myself. Guess what? Homeless. Right. Then they go, why did I lose my place? God didn't help me. Right. No one wanted to help me. Right. No, you didn't want to follow the right. principle, right. so therefore you cut off the spirit from helping you. Yeah. The Lone Ranger mentality, the Lone Ranger attitude will get you nothing but destruction. If you have done it that way your entire life, that's why you're messed up now. The faster you learn, God created us to need each other. God created us to ask. Not beg, ask. Nothing hurts a failure but a try. Right. Right. What's the worst that can happen? You told no. Go on to the next door. Right. It's going to kill you to ask no. That's just an, an abnormal, ranging amount of pride. That's why you can't ask. You have not because you ask not. It is also written in the testimony, in the law, and it is also written in your law, your law, that the testimony of two men is true. I am one who bears witness of myself, Father and the Holy Spirit, one with Jesus. Then they said to him, where is your father? Jesus answered, you know neither me nor my father. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. So if you have to ask that question, you do not know Jesus. You have to see, we had to, there's an awareness of Jesus. There's tons of people that are aware that Jesus exists or existed at some time. But they do not know the Christ. They do not understand. They have no relationship. Because if you have a relationship, then you will be hearing from the Almighty. Yes. 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 But if you do not know his son, how can you know him? Right. You cannot know his son sitting at home. Right. You cannot know his son not being a part of the church. Right. That is a great deception that has swept our land. Right. That I can have a relationship with the Almighty right. and not go to church. Or let's take it a step further. I can go to whatever church I want and I'm still chasing God. Deceived. <laughs> the demons are saying, yes, you can. <laughs> you can absolutely do that. Go wherever you want. God will be with you. Please do that so we can kill you. Because if we get you out of where God designed you to be, we have all rights to touch you and your children. So yes, you can go wherever you want and chase God wherever he may be. Deception. Man, Dad, I was trying, I thought this was, I read it last night, it talks about the father of lies. I thought it was here. I was all over the scriptures last night. Verse 32. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what it was saying. It was saying, oh, that's that's exactly right. It was saying, Father of Satan, or children of the devil. That's what it said. Yeah, uh, thirty-two. It says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Yeah, I read it last night. I just 
But see, what happened is last night I was studying the Thompson chain and I wanted to bring the Thompson chain, but I forgot. So I'm in the New King James, so it's, it's slightly different, but... 44? Oh, yeah. Here we go. Okay, we're going to start at 42. So Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Wait a minute. Right. Did he just get there saying he came to testify of himself? Right. Well, Jesus is confusing. <laughs> I don't understand. No, you don't know the son. Right. That's why you can't understand. Right. You don't read the scripture with revelation. Right. That's why you can't understand. Right. He's not contradicting himself. Steady, consistent. What does he say? He sent me. Right. Yes. I proceeded forth. Right. Yes. Came from God. Right. Yes. That's not contradicting at all. But naturally, you, you'll miss it. You, you'll never get that. Right. Ever. So it says, 43, why do you not understand my speech? Oh, man. Wow. <laughs> Jesus is saying, how come you can't understand what I talk? People say that to me all the time. I don't understand what you're saying. I don't understand. What do you mean? What do you mean? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You're not able to listen to my word. That's why you do not understand when I speak. You are your father, the devil. No, no. You are of your father, the devil. And the desires of your father, you want to do. Right. So wait a minute. Is he saying that your desires and Satan's desires go hand in hand? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Meaning the desires that you want to be for yourself? Right. Right. Those line up with Satan's? Right. No, he didn't say that. Jesus didn't say that. See, we just want to disregard. Just don't read none of this. <laughs> Stop reading that. We just want to disregard that part don't exist. I just want to talk about God's love and all his promises and all his blessings for me. They're all mine. No matter what I do, I can get blessed. Let's just disregard this. Stop talking about that. Yeah, that's what the demons are saying in your head right now. I can hear them. He was a murderer. Talk about Satan. Those who do not receive Jesus, their father. That goes for those that he has, my dad says all the time, he has a great heart. That she has a great heart. They have a great heart. But they're doing their own will, their own desires. It says right here that their father is Satan. How can you have a great heart and your father is Satan? A murderer from the beginning. And does not stand in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. Wait a minute. But doesn't it say Satan knows the word? Satan quotes the word to you. That's another thing that my dad said yesterday. He said that there was a man that kept quoting him scripture, but in his spirit, he knew it was wrong. But because he, didn't, he hadn't read that, he couldn't come back. He couldn't come back. He said he read and the Holy Spirit told him, read the verse above. <laughs> and in the verse above it said, and Satan said. <laughs> so the man was quoting scripture from the Bible and my dead spirit knew it was off, but he didn't know the word to the point to where he does now, obviously. And he, but he knew inside that ain't right. So even though he didn't know the word like the scholars know, like Nicodemus knew, right. his spirit knew that is all. Right. Then the spirit gave him the answer in the word. Right. Look him up. Oh, Satan said. So he couldn't wait to get back to work. To tell him, you are quoting Satan. But he was quoting the scriptures. There is no truth in the devil. So guess what? If you are about your own desires and your own will, and Satan is your father, then you live in lies. You dwell, you are steeped in deception and lies. That's for anyone. Jesus said last week to us, 
Anyone that is not about the will of my Father in heaven is not my family. Right. Meaning anyone that is not about the will of my Father in heaven, I don't associate with. Right. Unless I'm busting up hell in their life. Right. But guess what? Anyone that is not in the will of my Father, that means they're in the will of their own self. That means their father is Satan. Meaning they are filled and overwhelmed with lies and hell. But your natural mind says, I've known them for 20 years, they're a good person. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. Wow! Satan has his own resources? Yeah, he does. For he is a liar and the father of it. I'm sorry, Dad. I took too much time. I, this, I studied hard last night. Man. But everything, listen, everything, everything that the Spirit gave me, all of these things, offer of everything my father said. And that's something that I've learned from my. Look, I have journals. Actually, I stole it from him and the prophet. I got a journal from the prophet. I didn't steal. It was just I found it. And, and, I found a journal from my dad, and it's just filled with, <laughs> filled with all kinds of stuff. So why am I going to go and say, well, you know, I'm ordained by the Lord, so God, I can have my own thing. That's stupid. Why am I going to go try to talk and make and conjure? See, that's what, we, that's what people do. They want to make their own thing up. I want to have my thing. I want to have my thing. You will have no thing. As long as you want to have your thing, you will have no thing. Matter of fact, we read in the scripture last week, it says, and those things that you have obtained will be taken from you. And Jesus said, what I have cannot be taken, and I just grow more. But the things that you gain, they will be taken anyway. Unless you are chasing, listen, when you chase after the kingdom, it says, all seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added. We're so concentrated on getting the things right. versus the kingdom. Right. We're so, listen, let's break that down some more. When you go to your job, you're going for the things versus coming to church. Right. See, when you try to come and explain to me why you were not in church because of things, I have concrete in my ears. <laughs> because it goes opposite to what the Bible says. Right. It does not line up with the word of God. God didn't say, seek ye first your job, and then the kingdom, and then I will add everything. No, he doesn't say that. He says, seek the kingdom first. Then he said to us, you don't have what my men have. Meaning you have not paid the price to have what he has. You have not been released the keys. See, but if you submit to that, then you can. Right. Yeah. But as long as you want to do your own thing, right. you will not have. Right. Right. Your thing will never line up with his thing. Right. Right. And his thing is church. Yeah. His thing is kingdom. Yeah. His thing yeah. is heal the sick. Yeah. His thing is cast the demons out. Yeah. His thing is raise the dead. That's his thing. So if our minds are not on heavenly things, we read that last week in Colossians 3. Our minds are not on heavenly things, so how can we do what we need to do here on the earth for the kingdom of heaven? Jesus said, my father, all his will be done. His kingdom come. On earth, look, the Catholic, oh, you know what, I learned something about the Catholics, too. Which, uh, my father's Catholic, I, I don't, I love Catholics. Because they love the Lord. So it's not a strike. But there's something that restricts them from having the fullness and the power and the authority. They can't have that because of religion and tradition. So what I noticed when I was in the Catholic Church, they were praying, though. You know how they say, say that our fathers. But guess what? They left off the back end of it. I was like, oh wow. They read the, they, they said to our father, but when it came to, for the honor is the kingdom, on earth, and when they said about 
heaven coming to earth, they wow. left it out. Wow. Whoa. Wow. Then they left out, you reign forever and ever. They left it out. See, if you paid attention, if you know your word, if you actually read the Our Father prayer, when you go to the Catholic Church, you'll know, wait a minute, they, they're not saying everything. Wait a minute, so did they base everything on half of the word? Are they basing these things off half of the Our Father prayer? And wait a minute. Can we find Hail Mary in the Bible anywhere? No, don't talk about that. You hate Catholics. What are you doing? No, I'm not. I'm just trying to get you to, Jesus said, you see, but you don't see. You hear, but you don't hear. So you're sitting in there looking, you're sitting in there hearing, but you can't see or hear. Sorry, Dad. You all say, welcome to Bishop. Are we all? Okay, you can sit down. It's nothing to be sorry about. This is not my show. This is a. Uh, the Lord show. We can cut this fan off now. Sir. I don't need it. We can cut the fan off. We don't have a lot of time to have a show, but I have a few things uh, I wanted to say as as the uh, spirit was moving. Uh, he's always moving, but uh, in the church, there's the government of God. Amen. And so you come for, for instruction, you know, in righteousness and how to punish. Uh, oh, First Corinthians one, what a, what came to me. Chapter, actually, it's First Corinthians two. But anyway, um, in the eighties and nineties, when the church, uh, the structure of this church had grew. Uh, because I had built this, this, this structure on uh, what I had saw in the church. Amen. And, it, and it was not the pattern of the Bible. Right. It was the pattern of what other churches were doing, which they're still doing now. They have, church, they have uh, church growth seminars and all that stuff where you can have a lot of people come. And so then, you know, everybody thinks that's, that's just great, this church, and the more people you get, you know, the better and bigger the church is. Not that that's, that's not the way it is. Right. Not with God. Right. Because in the, in the uh, 80s and 90s, I had everything that you're supposed to have to be successful. Right. 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 I was on TV. Right. I had... Um, a bookstore. Right. I had a daycare. Yeah. Several. We had about five daycares. Right. I had a school from K through 12. Right. Um, the cookies go. The cookies leaves at the wrong time. Do <laughs> <laughs> these women need the bags? As much as they go into the bathroom, ridiculous. <laughs> but anyway. Um, that's a side note. But my point was, and so now listen, I was on TV and didn't want to be on TV. Because I had where I'm not trying to be seen and trying to promote myself and all that kind of stuff. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm not called, I mean, God didn't call me for that. Right. So I've, I've, you know, I submitted and other people would be on TV, you know, all my, through my ministry. And, and they, they wanted me to, to look at something uh, on what the praise and worship. And so I was, I was looking at a screen, and I mean, the, the praise and worship was, as far as you can, you can see, it right. with a natural eye, it was magnificent. All right. We had, we had the people, all the people up here, we had that on the, in the, on the uh, choir. 
We had 50, 60 people in the choir. And we we were rock we were, we were rocking it real hard. Praise and praise and worship just magnificent. So I'm looking at that and this we dancing and you know all like we always do. And we're talking about the way back. And I'm looking and I look at myself and I see I'm looking with my eyes open. I'm looking at myself and I'm my eyes are closed. I'm blind. So now, now see, this is revelation. The Lord is showing me that what He wants me to be in in His His economy in His kingdom, that I'm blind to it. And this, all this stuff that I have, is not what He wants. I mean, it's just, that, that's not a, well, you, can, you can't even imagine, I know you guys are dead uh, here this morning, but that's a, that's a hard blow. Yeah. Yeah. When you have done everything and you, are you successful? Yeah. I had fifty, sixty thousand dollars 60000 nut to crack every month. Right. I, had, I don't have 19 employees. I can go on and on and on. Right. And, and the money we had to put for the workers' comp, right, Troy? Glad to see you, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. We release healing to you. Yeah. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, and we're happy to have you back. Yeah. 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 Anyway, my point is, we don't have a lot of time, is, is the Lord showing me that he, this is not what he wants. Right. So I have a decision, and we all have that decision, right. where, whether I'm, I'm going to do what I, what I want to do and right. keep doing what I want to do and be you know, not uh, successfully looking su successful. Right. Or am I going to do what, what, what the Lord wants me to do, which I don't know what that is right. uh, back then. Right. Right. One thing that he showed me is that he wanted Cookie in. Yeah. Amen. Right. Which he never wanted to be in. Right. And I've said this thousands of times, and I said, and I don't want him to be in. I'm talking about the ministry. Right. He's always been in church. I didn't want them to be in because I saw what they did to the pastor's wife, and I can't have that. Amen. So I, I knew that that was one of the things that he wanted to do. And so I said, well, he has to work on Cookie because she, she doesn't want to do it. <laughs> and she's all about the beautician right. yeah. and all that stuff. And that's a, that's been, that was a conflict, still a conflict of interest. And whose interest? Mine. <laughs> And I can't get my hair cut because there's 40 heads in front of me every day. And I have to wait months. Gabriel waits. I said, I'm sick of it. I'm not going to wait anymore. But anyway, that's a side issue. I said, I got to get Cookie in so the Lord will I, I leave. The Lord will work on her, which he did. And he still is. Yeah. Just like he is on me. Right, right. right. Which we talked about in our, in our leadership meeting yesterday. But anyway, um, so now I said, I said to him, okay, I submit to what, you know, I don't know what it is you want me to do. I know now that this is not what you want. All right. So I'm saying all this because people begin to leave and, and, and you know, uh, Foolishness was always happening in the right. church. Right. So even now, so we had some people leave. Well, that's the, come on now. If, if you just got here, then you don't know what to happen in the church. Right. And, right. And, and, and it's, it's not the devil taking them out. Right. That's right. It's, it's the Lord taking them out. Right. Because when you're, when they build a spaceship, and, that, and that's, it's, it's a rocket. Right. I mean, a big, you know, all those engines and stuff. But as it's, as it's going into the, to go into the atmosphere, you guys pay attention. Yeah. Because some of you got squirrels in you already. And I'm trying to tell you something. When you're going up, as you go up, stuff starts falling off the, the rock. After the, the engines, after they did their job, then they fall off. And you, the only ones that stay in this is the, the ones that listen. <laughs> you better listen. The ones that make it are the ones that stay in the ship. 
which means stay in the church. Yes. In the ark, there's three levels. Yes. Three levels. Three is very powerful in the scripture. I don't have time uh, to break it down, but I know I had to change things. So I allow the Lord to, to do what he wanted people left. And it, it's, just, it's just been happening. And I have nothing to do with it. And the devil's not that strong. So what happens is you got to renew your mind because we cannot go further. When people are in, in, in my leadership but not following my lead. And I keep on saying this because it's still in some of you people. They had to leave because they wanted to leave. When you when you correct it and you won't receive correction, then you say you have to you leave. And that's what happens. Yeah. Yeah. You cursing and for, for want to fight in, in church and then oh, on yeah. Sunday morning. Come on up. That's oh, right, you guys. Oh, That's just insane. Yeah. And you wonder what what's what why what's wrong with you? I'm, I'm not gonna have that. You gonna have that in your house? That's fine. In my house, I'm on my natural house. My, my, I'm not gonna have all that hollering and screaming, and I never, never have. Right, right. My wife will try to fight me, but she can't. I'm just saying what it is. She's that. She's 40 years on the train. Right. I'm the conductor. I'm submitted to Jesus. I mean, I don't know why we have to go through these things, but we have to get straight. Because your house is a mess. Mine is not. And the Bible teaches that if, if your house is in order, in the natural house is in order, God says then you can be a candidate to, to set my house in order. Right. So as he is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. So as I do my house in the natural, I do the same in this house. But we're here to bless and help. We're not trying to, you know, I, I'm not trying to draw the line on you, but if, it, if it's drawn on you, then you just draw it on you. The Bible says in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4 and verse 2, it says, preach the word. In season and out of season. Rebuke. Rebuke. Correct. Instruct. That's what, that's what God said. Yes. Through the apostles. So we do it. Yeah. We do it here. Yeah. Laying the foundation. Yeah. So that the Lord can come. Yeah. Yeah. And heal the sick where they're not supposed to live. Yeah. Like me. Yeah. Right. Right. And others here. And to heal yeah. them. Yeah. We can't have the division. Right. For, for wanting the Christ right. to manifest himself. We have, we have to be one. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Spirit, soul, and body. Yes. We found out in our leadership meeting that your opinion is in your backside and it's supposed to be eliminated. Right. Right. We don't want to hear it. No. Right. What did you say? You said we need agreement, not opinion. Right. right. That is that my tie you get on? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me give you this scripture. Now, I hadn't planned to do all what I said, but I need to be, because of the things that I, I can still, you know, I, I, we, we're here to establish the kingdom. You can't establish the, king, the kingdom without punishing hell. Right. You better get that. That's right. right. You got to punish it on your own life first. You got to prove that the power of God works in your own life. That's how I started. I said, I got to find out about what is this thing about Jesus. Come on. From a seven year old boy to I've seen him like this. 33, was well, 33, you're 32, right? 33 years ago. Wow. Amen. I saw him like this. 
on, on Resurrection Day, which is on Easter, we call it. Resurrection Day. I had the vision. And I've been chasing it ever since. And this boy is the fulfillment to the vision. That's right. Because he was born... But he's a man now, but I'm saying, you know, yeah, yeah. He, I'm his dad. That's right. <laughs> Who's your daddy? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, he gave us the fulfillment of the of the vision of me seeing Jesus yeah. and what he would do in this city. Yeah. Yeah. That this city, Oceanside, will be a model city. If you, you, know, you, you people are dead because you don't believe it you're so much in your own little little stew you got a small little pot and, it, and you're in the stew yourself and you got your potatoes and your onions and it's all cut around you and you and you being stewed instead of busting that stuff I'm saying I'm not supposed to be in no little pot and I, I don't need to be a penny penny pitching when, I, when I, the Lord of glory has won the whole First Peter. Come on, man. Oh my God, I went to Peter. No. No, Lord, we can't go to Peter. I can't do it. I can't. <laughs> Pastor Clifton said, where's Clifton? I can't do it. I'm talking to the Holy Spirit so you don't even know. We're in second, First Corinthians chapter 2. But I said Peter because I want to go there. But I can't. Clifton won't let me. <laughs> Let's see. Man, this is so good. He first four. He says, the apostle says, my message and my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom. Well, that's definitely me. <laughs> but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power. Yes. Amen. That your faith, verse five, should not rest on the wisdom, wisdom of men. But on the power of God. Yes. Yet, verse 6, yet we do speak wisdom amongst those who are mature. Right. Right. That's why you are leaders. That's why you're the only ones that are still left. Right. Right. Because those, this is the, the, um, the Gideon army. Yeah. Right. Right. Yes, sir. Right. The only way to, to, for him to win is to have a hundred percent. That's just the way it was. That's the way it is here too. Yes, sir. He said, he said, all those are afraid. And all those are afraid. And all those that are uh, dismayed, afraid, and dismayed, and confused, and not sure, and have doubt. He said, how many of it is you? Ah, how many? 22,000 said, I'm, I'm, that's me. He said, okay, we release you. They got to fight over 100,000 many a night. And 22, he only has 30,000 30, uh, troops. The next, the next, the next course today was running through obstacle course. That's what we've been on, whether you like it or not. Some of you just got here. You don't know about when we were down the street, down in the valley. Dropped the building off because God wanted the church to understand the church is not a building. Everybody, when you meet a Christian, about ninety percent of them, when you meet them, they're not talking about God. They're talking about their building. And what we doing in the building. Right. So God want us to get it. No building. You the building. Right. We are the building. Yeah. Wherever we go, that's where the church goes. Yeah. So he wanted us to get it. Right. Yeah. Some of you just got here. Right. You don't know about the travel that we had to get to get here. Yeah. Right. 
You don't know that we got here supernaturally. Yeah. By yeah. divine power, yeah. we got in this place yeah. when the city said we can't. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, you don't even know how to do history. Yeah. And I prophesied when we dropped off the building paying ten thousand dollars a month. Yeah. I said that's time to stop. That's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Drop that off. And then I said. The we going to the Star Theater, which we couldn't even go. Right. right. But I said, we going. I said, and God said, the way to get to the Star, we got to go through the park. Yeah. What? Yeah. We got to leave the nicest building we ever had and go to the park? That's what I said. That's what he, that's what he told me. And he came. Oh, did you this is just too much? He came in the building that I was in. And what Gabriel preached, which was all the revelations, happened to me. When he came in the building, came up behind me, and I could see him. And I never turned around. I said, Don't turn around. I didn't go, or Satan's here. I said, No, I didn't. I knew he was there in the building. And I can see him with my spirit eyes. Right. Spirit eyes, he loves to turn around. Right. You don't know nothing about that. Right. Right. And so I prophesied because he, he because he he'd already said, I would die in one area and resurrect in another. Right. The prophet said it. That's right. Then said it about the ministry, it was about the building, and I didn't even know it was about myself. Right. 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 And I just keep on, no matter what happens in my life, I keep getting up. Yeah. No matter what happens, I keep getting up. You gotta keep getting up. So we said we go to the park. We had our best services in the park. Yeah. Wonderful services in the park. Yeah. And I can always remember what we call our group of super saints. What we call them. We had a name for them. Well, we had the, we had the super saints, but we had the women of wisdom. And I always could see Chrissy's mother. Every time I talk about the park, Chrissy's mother and others just jump out at me. Because they would always be there with their sun hats. And, and, and I said, they were like, well, no matter where Bishop going, I wasn't Bishop then I was a pastor. No matter where he's going, I'm going. Right. 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 Mary Jo was another one. Right. Mama Frances, she was another one. I mean, it was always, you know, they, they, they like, they, you women are like uh, the women that Jesus had. Right. Right. Yes. The ones that followed him around. Yes. The ones that, they're the ones that sold in the ministry. Yes. Yes. So I think it's Luke 8, but it's in the book of Luke. It's, I called a bad address to me today. But so that bothered me. But it's, you know, just shake it off. Yeah. But you got to see it. The, the women supported, they sustained, they believed. Right. Yeah. Right. They knew. Yeah. They knew yeah. who he was. Yeah. They knew he had the word that, that he had, Jesus had the words of life. Right. Yeah. And so we came through that park. And I don't remember how, how much time. Do you remember how much time we were at the park again? Six months? Two or three years. No, don't be silly. It was a Months. Months. too young. He took me too many shots to the head when he was young. Yeah, about six months. Where's Kevin? Where's Kevin? Okay. Is Ray up there? Yeah, I'm going to give you my boat, Ray. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Who's going? Yeah. That's right. But anyway, um, the women supported Jesus. Yes. And I, I I don't talk about the women much because I already know. Oh yeah. Right. I know they would be. Amen. No matter what, Amen. they with me. So I'm gathering my men. Yeah. Yeah. What I, what's I keep getting Cassie's uh, son's name? Robert. Robert. 
but I just, I love Robert. Amen. Of course, we love Kathy. We we in there we fight like with Kathy. Yeah. I may not look like it, but I do. I fast a meal with Kathy every day. For 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 her to be able to, to, to get up. Yeah. She already I see how she walked. I said that's a woman of faith. I know, I know. Yes. Yes, but coming to church, yes. even yes. though it hurts you, yes. she gets help every time. Yes. And we, we, we believe that she's going to just get yes. better. Yes. That's what she's believing. That's what I'm believing. Yes. In the name of the King Jesus. Yes. Anyway, let me give you the scripture. Let's finish it. So, He's talking about the wisdom, he said in the middle of verse 6, but he said a wisdom, however, not of this age. So he said, we do not speak wisdom amongst those, we do speak wisdom, excuse me. We do speak wisdom amongst those who are mature. Yes. A wisdom, however, not of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are passing away. So these are the mysteries that we break yes. when we yes. break the bread to give to you. Yes. Yes. Amen. It is wisdom yes. for those that have ears to hear. Yes. Verse 70 says, but we speak God's wisdom in a mystery. So I just yes. said that and there here it is. Yes. But we speak God's wisdom in the mystery. Yes. The hidden wisdom. Yes. Which God predestined before the ages to our glory. Yes. The, verse 8. The wisdom which none of the rulers of this age has understood, even right. to this very day. Right, right. For if they had understood it, yeah. right. they would not have crucified Woo. the Lord of glory. Right. So what he was he what he's saying is that we we we're hearing you know uh, um, we're having a rough time no we're not oh, oh, you got to change the thinking That's right. That's right. That's right. you better make sure that you your seat belt is on yes. Right. Yes. That's right. That's right. you better make sure that your helmet is on your head yeah. which is the helmet of salvation yeah. that it covers your ears. Yeah. You got to make sure that your seatbelt is on because if you, if you have a collision or you get bumped and your seatbelt is not on, you're going to hit your chrome dome. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So hopefully you have your helmet of salvation so when you take that shot, you may just have a concussion. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to stop that talk about uh, what's going on. Right. Right. When you got that foolishness in you, you're already you're releasing the squirrel. Right. Right. You become a super squirrel and you will be wind up in the darkness. Right. When you wake up, right. if you do. Right. I can't be worried about those that have de departed. Right. The Bible talks about them going on their own way. Right. I have to talk about the, the direction of the church. Yes. Yes. Right. Right here, verse 9, it says, But just as it is written, and we're doubt, things which eye has not seen, and ear has not heard, and which has not even entered the heart of man, that God has prepared for those who love him. So my point that I wanted you to get is that in the, the rulers believe, I'm talking about this age, Satan and the rulers this age, believe that they have Jesus, they believe that they have us, they believe that they have you, but they do not. Come on, Come on, if you look past 
your natural circumstances. You have to. Amen. If you're going to walk with God, if you're going to have faith. Amen. That's why I said, that's why I like this generation that's underneath. Yeah. Because they may be tatted. Come on. They may be pierced. Yeah. But they have a tenacity yeah. inside of them. Yeah. And if I get Jesus in them, they will be the warriors yeah. of the new millennium and help to bring back the Christ. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, this side of me is dead. We got some people right here. Hey, brother, you should be shaking company with your hands, girl. But anyway, if you all stand, we got to get out of here. All right. We got to show. Oh man, we need to break down. Need an envelope. You need to go in there for your envelope. Your if you need an envelope, raise your hand. We'll receive the title and offer. I saw people giving. If anybody wants to give, you have it. Ray, I'm gonna give you my vote. Give me my boat. Some, somebody left this. This is this is this is a bell. This is your keys to your car. Somebody got to, a Toyota. Donate the Toyota to the church. Anybody drive the Toyota that don't have the keys, look and make sure you got your keys. If you got a Toyota. Check it out. You're not donating it to the church. Come on, let's go. Any announcements, Island? Okay, the women's love feast is on at Asia. The Holy Spirit is working on Kathy on your neck. I can sense it right now. And other people that have neck problems, the Lord is healing you right now. Yeah. The Lord Jesus Christ. And also, people have a problem in their stomach. It was happening while Gabriel was preaching. Yeah. The, the problem with the stomach is demons. They need to come out. So you need to take it, blow out, come in. Blow out and come in. Yeah. So you blow out the bad and bring it in the good. Yeah. Anything else? We have the love feast at where? At Adrian's house. At, at 11. And men's meeting at? Oh, good. Arrowwood. Yeah. No offense, Justin. No, no oh, and last but not least, is Justin uh, paid for that microphone. He just went out and did it. Yeah. So we're gonna have to take care of him for the uh, for the for the price. It was six hundred dollars. So if anybody wants to give a hundred, we'll pay the whole thing off. Just give the envelope and put on there for the camera. No. Microphone. Because we and we have another camera. That we, anyway, we gotta go. Yeah. We'll tell you. We'll tell you uh, by Facebook. How about that? Yeah, it works.